And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole. And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's story bears the provocative title, Death Goes Shopping, and was written by Roy Grandy. Peggy Newton, Warner Brothers star, recently seen in the hit motion picture, Italian Road, will play the part of Pat Murphy, a girl who always buys the things she wants and can't keep them. When she decides that social prestige and the big checkbook are what she wants most in life, she puts them on her shopping list, too. But this time, she gets more than she bargained for when death goes shopping. Oh, uh, Mr. Barnes, pardon me for saying so, but perhaps this little lady got into trouble because she forgot to put the most important thing on her list. Something that makes a hit with any man. And that's Mole. The breathless shaving cream that's heavier. Yes, sir, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Death Go Shopping. Starring Peggy Newsom. Have you ever thought what it would be like if you could go out and buy anything you want, just anything? I mean, if you could turn your budget away and leave out the bag and basin. I assure you, Miss Murphy, that Sheffield production is indistinguishable from the original. I like the original. <laughs> but this silver service is just in display. <laughs> Why, these three pieces are valued at $11,000. I said I'll take it. Oh, of course, Miss Murphy. Mm, now, let's see. I want a pair of candelabra. Just show me your best. Of course, Miss Murphy. Of course, only the best for Miss Patricia Murphy. And they could throw away the price tag for all I had to care. The only catch was, I couldn't keep any of those beautiful things for myself. Personal shopping service, Miss Murphy speaking. Hello, Pat. Oh, Mr. Christian, I found you the most wonderful chef here. I know, it's been delivered. You've got it again, Pat. Well, I'm so glad you're satisfied. Does your wife... Never mind about her. Pat, I have ballet tickets for tonight. Oh, well, really, Mr. Christian, you've taken me out so much. Not I... nearly as much as I'd like to. But I don't think it'll be very much longer before I can. Well, what do you mean? Suppose I pick you up at 7, as usual. All right. As usual. I wasn't being impolite to any of my biggest customers like Albert Cushion. After all, it wasn't doing me any good spending other people's money for things I couldn't keep. If I hadn't been turning toward Albert Cushion, it would have been somebody else with a checkbook. A girl can find so many chances when she's running her own personal shopping business. Sometimes very big chances... Sometimes so small, they're hardly good for a laugh. Jim Allen, for example. Uh, you're Mr. Murphy, the personal shopper? Yes. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Jim Allen. I work here in this department store up on the seventh floor. Rugs, I hand Lori Adels. I uh, seem to come in here buying things occasionally, so I thought uh, I'd look you up. Yes? I was wondering if you couldn't do some shopping for me. Oh, is it business? Well, it's pretty small. I, I want to get to know a girl. Maybe you want a matrimonial bureau. Well, I was afraid it would sound funny, but I don't mean it that way. She's a girl I've seen around a lot, and I'd uh... like to know her. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. So, so I want you to pick out some gift a girl would really like. Before you even know her? Well, I wanted to break the ice. 
Would you help me? Well, I'll think it over. Uh, what's the limit on your budget? Oh, well, I can go up to five dollars. Oh, I see. Well, leave your card with me anyway. Oh, I haven't got any cards yet. I'm too new in the rug department. But things are coming along for me, though. No, I could tell. Where are you name then? Oh, I thought I already introduced myself. I'm Jim Allen. I'll call you up later and see if you found something. Huh? Yes, be sure to check that. Why tell him I was specializing in the larger purchases? After he left, though, I... I tried to imagine what it would be like, me going along with a guy like that, celebrating with him over a 250 raise, congratulating him on getting to be floor walker. Oh, uh, that wasn't for me. I was after bigger games. All right, Pat. Let's face it. Let's face what? The time's coming, I'll have to be sure. What about? Whether you'll marry me? Marry? Oh, are you getting a divorce? I won't need one. Well, no, I... Don't interrupt. Just that you've known my wife's an invalid. I've never told you how ill she is. Well, if that's what you're counting on, Joan. Well, let me finish. It's her heart. Just what, I don't know. She works up all the symptoms in the book, and a doctor doesn't know either. She's an old-fashioned quack, but she won't have anybody else. Can you imagine? He's treating her with an explosive... An explosive? <laughs> well, I'm glad you aren't serious. Well, I am, though. It's not in the explosive form. The spirit form, it's a treatment for the heart. Or was before digitalis replaced it. Oh, it sounds dreadful. It is. It's not a poison, of course, but in a concentrated solution, it has that same effect. I, I don't like this kind of talking. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to get away from my question. Will you? Will you? How can I? Well... If things were different, would you? No, oh, how can I know? Things, things aren't different. They will be. Don't ask me how. No. I don't want to ask you how. That's better. Now, look at it this way. You've been making my purchases for me. Now I want you to have them. They'll be yours, Pat. You'll never have to stop buying anything you want. Well, what do you say? Do you really have that much money? You'll never have any limit with me. Well, Pat, I guess you've answered me. Have I? I think so. <laughs> oh, Pat, you're wonderful. No wonder I love you. I didn't say anything about love. Don't. Not now. I'll buy that for you, too. Just put that on your shopping list. Everything else you want goes with it. Well, I... I won't say the commodity is impossible to find on the market. I, I'll have to do some comparison shopping around, of course, but I, I might be able to find what you want. Well, oh, I'm, I'm not saying I didn't know what I was getting into. I knew, of course, even if I didn't let myself think about it. Hell, well, Cushing was right. I've given my answer. I knew it when I did the one bit of shopping he wanted me to do. Excellent discrimination, Miss Murphy. It's the finest stone in the store. Just give it a simple Tiffany set. Uh, certainly, Miss Murphy. Um, and the uh, arrangement? Oh, the same as usual. Just charge it to the cooking account. <laughs> uh, do you mean you haven't heard? What about? Why, Mrs. Cushing has terminated her account. Oh, well, this is for Mr. Cushing, Albert J. Oh, didn't you know? Mr. Cushing has no account. What? All the charges have been paid by his wife. Oh, uh, uh, the charges. Now, about the engagement, Rick. Miss Murphy, are you quite all right? So there was a bottom to the purse. The money was almost in my hands, and I took it for granted. But now that the money was taken away so suddenly, I wasn't so ready to give it up. Pat, don't tell me I shouldn't have come to your house. I had to see you. Don't move. Just a minute. You could have looked through the archway into the hall. Do you want to ruin everything? You didn't tell me ever since you had it in your wife's name. Oh. Well, that won't be much longer. Oh, this is where I came in. Yes, and it's time you stayed. Pat, I want you to do something for me. What? Here's a prescription. Get it filled for me. What's it for? Just get it. Why don't you? You won't let me out. Why do you suppose my wife closed her accounts? 
She knows about you, Pat. Oh, not by name, but she knows there's a you. She'll change her will if I let any more time go by. I'll lose everything. I see. This prescription is the thing you aren't going to talk about. If you don't do it, we'll lose everything. Hmm. Isn't it funny? I knew what you meant, and I didn't let myself understand. You'll lose everything. Uh, what? What would this drug do? It'll do the job. And it won't leave a trace. It's the same medicine she's taking already. It's just highly concentrated. I told you I don't like this kind of talk. Then don't talk about it. Buy it. After that, you can buy anything you want. Buy it. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Albert, I don't know. I closed the door on murder. Any way I thought I did when I ran away from that brownstone house. Now I really knew what I'd been asking for. And I couldn't get away from it fast enough. By the time I went to my office the next morning, the prescription Albert gave me was just something else a woman can bury in her handbag. Hi, uh, good morning, Miss Murphy. May I come in? Oh, you again, Mr. Allen. Haven't you met your dream girl yet? Well, yes, I have, but I still want that gift to since thing. Gift? Oh, you wanted me to find some little thing a girl would want to keep. Oh, I still do. Only don't spend five dollars on it. I'd like you to make it ten. Say, aren't you spreading? Oh, I can afford it now. I got a raise. I knew you would. I didn't even think you noticed me. Oh, I had you sized up. You'll get there. Maybe not in time to enjoy it, but you'll get there. Oh, I'm enjoying it now. You see, it isn't having things that count. It's working to get them. You know what I mean, don't you? No, I'm I'm afraid not. Oh, I think you do. I I sized you up, too. Yeah, so I noticed. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean Well, you know, I just came in to see you. Forget it. The girl doesn't need a gift. Oh. Oh, I... I guess you know that. <laughs> well, you were pretty obvious. I'm awful sorry. I, I just wanted to meet you. Well, you did. Yeah, I'm... Well, when I got to know you just a little, I wanted everything to be just right. Is that why you upped the ante to ten dollars? Oh, in a way. I don't set a limit on things I value. I figure when I get so I can afford a hundred or then a thousand... Is that how you figure? Do me a favor, will you? Go ahead and find that gift, just like all you knew about was the original order. No, I'm sorry. Wait I... Minute. Here's a $10 bill. I, I'd like to see you do that. No. Just leave the money and get out of here. I, I can't be bothered right now. I wasn't going to cooperate with Albert Cushing, and I wouldn't have. But then this here Marilyn had to come around and be so darn sweet and good looking. I was falling for him. I knew it, and I, I couldn't let myself. I would not go without money any longer. So I ran from the thing I wanted most. Without thinking, I, I grabbed a $10 bill off my desk. Jim Allen's $10 bill, and I, I did a kind of shopping I never thought I'd do. to Pat Murphy's shopping list, one bottle of spirits of octoglycerin. To be taken in small quantities? No, to be taken all at once by Mrs. Albert Cushing. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Two of tonight's mole mystery, Death Goes Shopping. Meantime, a word from Dan Seymour. Men, here's a frank question from one man to another. Do you ever feel like throwing away your razor and letting your beard grow wild? Well, if shaving is that painful... Chances are you have a wiry, hard-to-cut beard or a tender skin. And that's why I'm here to tell you about Mole, the brushless shaving cream that's heavier. Yes, because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight and lets your razor take them off close and clean. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say it's smooth. So smooth. It's flexed. So flexed. It's a smooth, smooth, flex flake shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of Jeff Goes Shopping, starring Peggy Newton. made it up.
up, but are you sure you don't want the 1% solution? Just give me what the doctor ordered. I want you to understand that this is a highly concentrated solution of spirits of opposition. More than a few drops of it would be fatal to a healthy heart. Will you just give it to me? No, $3.67. Here, take it out of this. I won't. You feel good? Well, it better be. What's wrong? Oh, just party. About the prescription, let me call it Neil's again. <laughs> Let me get in out of the rain, sir. Hurry up. All right, driver, just cruise around. Well? I, I got it. That's have it. Are you, are you sure it won't leave any trace? No. It's already saturated with the same stuff in a lighter solution. It's been taking it for years. Where is it? Here. It's, it's this little bottle. Give it to me. Oh, but will it, will it be very painful? It'll be fast and efficient. That's all we care about now. And it's got to be fast. She saw you in the hallway last night. She wants to change your will. Come on, hand it over. All right. Here it is. Oh, no, I can't. No. Oh, you broke Oh, I had to. I couldn't go on with this. I just couldn't. <laughs> Pat, darling, you're going ahead with it anyway. No. Driver, stop the cab. Let me out. I want to get clear out of here. By all means, driver, pull over to the curb. Don't think you're going far, Pat. I didn't need that bottle. Well, you don't have... If I could forge one prescription, I could forge another. And I did, a long time ago. They'll never trace my purchase. Well, then why did you want... If anything should be suspected, your purchase will be so obvious. Oh, but you can't do it. You must... Is this a convenient place to let you off? It's not far from your office. Albert, listen when to me. When you see me again, everything will be ready for us. Goodbye, darling. Oh, it's you again. Leave me alone. Please don't misunderstand. I don't want to annoy you. Then but... don't. Oh, well, I've got to tell you something. That bill I needed, it's dollar bill. I've got to have it back. Oh, you'll get your refund. I, I guess that's the best thing you could get from me. Here, take it too high. But you don't understand. I've got to have that same bill back. The same bill? Why? Because I gave a serial number on it for the cash. What are you talking about? Well, the serial number was one with the police department and warned us to watch for it. Somebody I don't know who paid for a purchase with it this morning. And when I noticed the number, I called the cashier and he asked me to bring it up to him. So I stuck it in my pocket. And then when I met you, I, I guess I absentmindedly gave you that same bill. But, but I used that bill to make a purchase. Oh. Well, that's too bad. I suppose whoever got it has the same list of numbers and I'll turn it over to the police. I hope it doesn't get you in any trouble. Pat, what's the matter? What's wrong? Pat! The bill was marked. The druggist had turned it over to the police. They'd connect it with the prescription. Then, my own danger never entered my head. All I could think of was that this big, sweet jerk would become involved, get into trouble. When I rushed out of the store. I hardly knew I'd left him. I, I scarcely heard myself giving directions to a taxi driver, but it brought me back to the large brownstone house. The house where Mrs. Albert Cushing just might still be alive. I've got to have time. I've got to have time. Pat! Pat! Hmm. Pat! Pat, didn't you really call? Jim, why did you follow me? You're in some trouble, aren't you? Oh, you don't know anything, and I haven't time to explain to you. Here. Oh, please, please, let me help. Get out of here. You've never been able to buy any happiness in here, have you? What do you know about it? Well, I saw you come out of here last night. I'm afraid I was following you. I hope we fall into a conversation and then keep it going. But when I saw you were crying and you walked away You've from... never been around here before, I understand. Now, get out. Albert! Albert! Who's that? Must be Mrs. Cushy. Albert, help me! Help me! Hey, help the matter with her. Is she alone? It sounds like... Well, she... well, hello, Pat. Imagine meeting you here. Introduce me to your friend. Oh, oh listen, you can't go through with this. Help me. Help me. In a moment, sweet. Sit down, Pat. Let me mix you a drink. Hey, look, you. Uh, what's wrong with that woman? Uh, her heart, I think. Why, you dirty, cold-blooded. I'm going in. Jim, come back here. Let him go, Pat. Let go of my arm. I'm going. Oh, no, you don't. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
<laughs> Too late, my dear. Uh, I told her about oh, somebody. Then what have you done? She was having an attack. She asked for a medicine, and I gave it to her, and then she seemed to collapse. Come on, get a doctor. It's too late for that. What do you mean? Young man, I don't know your name, but it's going to become well-known. I'll take that glass, if you will. My handkerchief will save your fingerprint. Oh, well, what's the idea? <laughs> the prints will contradict any foolish testimony. As for the doctor, my late wife doesn't need one. <laughs> Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act 3 of Death Goes Shopping. Now, a word from George Putnam. If stands up is spoiling the appearance of your hair and you've been trying to combat it with little or no success, listen carefully. Many outstanding authorities say that the most common kind of dandruff is caused by a germ called Pity Ross Palmo Valley. Now, many dandruff combating methods are no more effective for fighting this germ than plain water and brushing. For like water, all they do is remove loose dandruff. To get real relief, this germ must be destroyed. Double dandrine really works because double dandrine actually kills this germ on contact. Even in many severe cases, results with double dandrine have been remarkable. Now, the amazing effectiveness of double dandrine is due to a special ingredient, an active antiseptic so wonderfully efficient many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So try double dandrine and see if you don't agree that most methods can't compare with its dandruff combating effectiveness. Get double dandrine tomorrow. Your money back if not satisfied. Jim was arrested and charged with murder. I was taken in as his accomplice and then mysteriously released. I didn't know why until the trial. Everything was circumstantial, but it all pointed to Jim. I don't even think his own lawyers believed the truth. As Jim's attorneys, Miss Murphy, we want you to stay as far away as possible. We see the prejudice is case. And nobody listened to me, even when I tried to shout the truth from the witness stand. And I know, gentlemen of the jury, that you will not lend credence to the completely unsubstantiated charges of this hysterical girl who has attempted to smear Albert J. Cushing, a man in position in the... And there was so much more against Jim than his fingerprints on the glass. He really had followed me to the Cushing house, not once, but twice. The druggist with that $10 bill. Oh, perhaps this fellow wanted the poison for himself. All I know is it was the woman who came in. And, and then I... Jim himself, his own worst witness, involved in a tortured lie, shielding me from big, dumb, sweet boy scout. Yeah, I admit Miss Murphy knew nothing about it. I told her I wanted a medicine for my mother. When it was over, all of a sudden, I was left out of it. Well, it's funny. Jim tried to meet me with some little gift ten dollars would buy. For I ain't nothing. But that wasn't the price. It was a death trip. Not to call. Now, don't hang up. The trial is all over now. You might as well cash in with me. The way I felt about you hasn't changed a bit. Pat, are you listening? Snap out of it, Pat. My charge accounts are just waiting for you. Darling, are you still on? Come back. Come on. Robert knew he was appealing to my weakness. It had been a week since I'd done any shopping, even for a customer. But hearing him remind me and hurting his voice so gave me an idea. I went out and I did a great deal of shopping. But the law won't let me sell a revolver. Oh, Mr. Cushing expects you to bill him double the price. You can arrange it, can't you? Well, as you say, I can go ahead and deliver it. Is this 
really your strongest chance? Yep, guaranteed. But what a pretty young girl like oh, you. Oh, well, it's not for me. Just charge it and deliver it to Mr. Cushing. I have just a small bottle of cyanide here. Would you mind delivering it along with the knife? Yes, that's right. To Mr. Albert Cushing. What the devil's the idea? I'm not at all sure, Mr. Cushing. If all this is your idea of a joke, what did you come to see me for anyway? I'm beginning to wonder. Oh? I didn't think your gift left any doubt. Don't give them away. You might want to use oh, one. I wouldn't consider giving them up. <laughs> I look on them as collector's items. I've even kept them together in this cabinet. Excellent. I think the police will have no trouble finding them there. Police? <laughs> what are you talking about, darling? What about my visit to the DA this morning? Now, look... You don't think I'm going to let that boy die, do you? That's all settled. He was found guilty. Nothing can be done. No? Well, in that case, you won't have to worry about the DA reopening the investigation. You're bluffing. In that case, why worry? Who's that? I think I know. Why don't you take a look out of the window and see? Just a moment. It's it's a policeman. No, you did talk to the DA. I told you I did. Just one catch, dear. This case won't stand up very well without the star witness. Here. Have a drink on me, darling. Drink? Oh, no. Oh, yes. You're going to drink it, my dear. I find it necessary. And finding you had committed suicide using the same poison that was used to murder my wife should mollify the DA. But you can't do it. No. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Mr. Cushing, I came to... Hey, what is this? Officer, help me. He's trying to kill me. Don't listen to her, officer. The girl's hysterical. She came here threatening to blackmail me. She tried to poison me. The drink will prove it. Why, you... Look out, officer. He's got a gun. Put it down, Mr. Cushing. Put it down, Mr. Oh! He poured me a drink, Inspector. You remember how Mrs. Cushing died? That kind of poison? They're getting ready to execute James Allen for that but one. But Jim is and Cushing really killed his wife. That's why he wanted me out of the way. Now, just a minute. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Good work. Well, Miss Murphy, you had it right. That was a laboratory call. You found poison? The analysis showed a reasonably exact facsimile in the glass and in Cushing's basement. It's not actually poison, though. But it's of oxoglycerin, the old-fashioned treatment for the heart. Only it's the same solution that ended in the Allen case, and no heart could take that. Now you believe what I said on the witness team. Yeah. Well, it looks like you saved him. The report's going to the governor. Will he be pardoned? That's my bet. He'd better like it. You almost swapped your life for his. So now, Jim free, and I'm going shopping again. He wants me to pick out my own engagement ring. Oh, and I suppose I should tell you. Cooking was right when he said I was bluffing. I hadn't spoken to the DA. Oh, next to the policeman at the door. That's the one on the beach. He asked me if I thought Mr. Cushing would buy two tickets to the policeman's ball. I said I was sure Mr. Cushing would if the policeman would drop around at 4 o'clock shop. It's a good thing he wasn't late. <laughs> music for the Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sandler. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on Mystery Theater and any actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Sometimes when we're tired, we make mountains out of molehills. We putter around till even the easiest job seems impossible. If you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia, resulting from a feral nutritional blood deficiency. Then you need ionized yeast tablets. They help build up your strength by building up your red blood cells. So take ionized yeast tablets to get back your color, your vigor, your driving energy. Ionized yeast tablets. And now this is Dan Seymour again saying good night until next week at this same time when the Mystery Theater <laughs> presents Zelma's Boy. <laughs> Yeah.
You have just heard Mole Mystery Theater. This program was heard earlier over the network of the National Broadcasting Company and transcribed for presentation on KPO at this time. This is KPO, your NBC station in San Francisco. Hear ye, hear ye, delicious gum, made by Adam. Adam Cole, cream and pepsin, chiclets, and then cream. For chewing gum with long-lasting flavor, buy gum by Adam. He's back, William Bendix, as Riley himself on The Life of Riley, KPO, tomorrow night at 7. Stay tuned now for...